It's easy to look at a phone like this and stick to the top surface level detail. OnePlus has effectively made a phone that is $299 that provides a pretty good experience considering that price point. But while that is something to be celebrated, why do I still feel kind of uneasy about applying that notion to this phone? Well, let's talk about that because this is Pocket Now and I'm Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? These are my thoughts on the OnePlus Nord N10. Before I get started, might I remind all of you that Pocket Now has a podcast. I am the host of the Pocket Now Weekly Podcast, where we recently did talk a little bit about this OnePlus Nord N10. Make sure you hit the link in the description so that you can subscribe to the podcast and hang out with us every single week. OnePlus is generally known for their pleasing designs, and a cornerstone of the Nord line is minimalism. The original OnePlus Nord debuted in 2020 to quite a bit of fanfare, and that highly capable mid-range phone made many people clamor for a similar release here in the US market. But now we have the Nord N10, in a design that is still quite minimal but is far less eye-catching, to the point of the N10 feeling a little sterile. Now let me be clear, this is not a bad looking device, it's just that the simple tones of the phone, as well as the overall build quality, make it feel all too familiar, and it doesn't seem particularly unique the way that other phones in the OnePlus catalog manage to be. It's a plastic sandwich, and you get one colorway in the midnight ice. The backing does reflect the light in a nice manner and posts up the OnePlus logos under the back-mounted fingerprint reader. This curve on the back helps the phone sit nicely, even if it feels a little lighter than the actual size of the body would have you believe. What strikes me about the Nord N10 is what OnePlus decided to include or remove around the frame. There's a single speaker down here that is next to a headphone jack, which is something we don't see in even OnePlus flagships anymore. A dedicated fingerprint reader on the back might be a little bit polarizing as some do prefer it over an in-display reader. And maybe the most striking difference between this and any other OnePlus device is the loss of the alert slider. Admittedly, I barely use the alert slider on other OnePlus phones, but it's one of those things that you just can't unsee once you notice it's no longer there. I mean, I associate that particular feature with any OnePlus phone, and the fact that it isn't here was my first instance of thinking that something is very different about the N10. All right, I mentioned the display, and yes, this is an LCD panel. The resulting color reproduction won't be very close to that of an OLED display, obviously, which is to say that the colors are decent, but contrast levels can be better. OnePlus does include some of their display modes in this screen still, like the reading mode, which is appreciated. However, the nature of LCD means that there's no always on display. The other gripe I can see people having with the display is the bezel. There's a fair bit of it all around, but there's this extra bit at the bottom. Now, usually this wouldn't bother me, but then when I open up content like games, the top portion renders below the hole punch camera, leading to an even more asymmetrical looking bezel situation. But credit where credit is due, this screen does sport a 90Hz refresh rate which makes everything feel a little bit smoother. Considering the easy on the eyes design of Oxygen OS, high refresh rate is definitely nice to have. So for a $299 phone, I know that there are certain parts that had to be dialed back in order to make that price. But on the surface level, it seems that OnePlus has made a phone that is a decent enough looker, but doesn't really sport much more that represents OnePlus than this logo on the back. Now getting to the internals, there are more compromises made to create this budget-friendly device. The first on the list is the Snapdragon 690, which is a 5G-enabled processor with decent enough performance. It is noteworthy that the Nord N10 brings 5G to the masses for a very affordable price point, but if you were looking for OnePlus to bring the fire for the price of a matchstick, that's just not the case here. Getting the usual tasks done like social media, browsing, and media consumption despite the full HD Plus resolution is no problem here, so most general users will find this a good everyday value device. Less intensive mobile games will also work well enough on here, but personally I'm on games like Shin Megami Tensei and Genshin Impact, which both had to be dialed back significantly to play smoothly. The rest of the spec sheet is not overachieving by any means, but it is definitely enough for most. 6GB of RAM will handle things like multitasking, while the 128GB of storage can be expanded with a micro SD card. And then the battery life has been mostly good enough for me, with the 4300mAh battery getting me through pretty much any full day of work and play without much worry. OnePlus does make sure to keep Warp Charge 30T on deck for this phone, so if you do get antsy about lower percentages, you just have to make sure to use the included charger to top back up pretty quickly. But based on performance alone, if you're looking at this phone as your next purchase, it's probably because you aren't going to use it for like overachieving tasks. Things like content creation, which I'll get to in a second with the camera, and high gaming, those things are just not the focus of the N10. And nearly every part of this phone seems to have been adjusted with that mindset. 
which leads us to the cameras, which starts off with a 16 megapixel front facing shooter. And because this is a OnePlus phone that bears the name of Nord, it's really hard not to compare it to the original OnePlus Nord, which came out earlier in 2020 and is definitely a phone that we all had our eyes on. There are a couple of things about the cameras on the Nord that actually really enticed users like me. For one thing, there was a wide angle camera on the front facing shooter. Also, 4K across all of the uh, cameras, including the front, with that wide angle just made vlogging that much more fun on a smartphone. Those are all things that you don't get on the Nord N10. Uh, very specific things have been stripped down to make this phone as affordable as it is. But then you flip it around and the main shooters are centered around a 64 megapixel sensor that does a pretty good job for general capture in good lighting situations. The 4K video recording is also pretty good and it includes a cine aspect ratio that is tighter than your typical 16 by nine. The combination of HDR and pixel binning on the main sensor means it's not terrible in low light situations, but at least there is nightscape for that little boost. The ultra wide sensor dips far down to eight megapixels and is a decidedly decent performer, suffering more in the low light situations than the main camera. There's also quite a bit of distortion in the edges for photos, even though in video it's a little bit less obvious. The other two cameras include a macro sensor that lets you get close up, and then a monochrome sensor that is at two megapixels, so its ultimate usefulness is a little bit questionable. Maybe it's nice to have these extra sensors on here, but I'm not too sure how often they would actually get used. At least the main sensor is pretty good, so you'll probably end up sticking with it and just leave the extras aside. And finally, I do want to talk a little bit about Oxygen OS. As you might notice in this review, my opinion of this phone comes down to how well it bears the OnePlus name. Now, like many budget devices, sometimes the main way to rock the brand is through the software. The thing is, Oxygen OS is here to make the Android experience easier on the eyes. Yet without the specs to take advantage of some of the features, it just feels stripped back. Certain layers like OnePlus Switch, the reading mode, and customizations are still here, which is good. But without an AMOLED screen, Oxygen OS's recent and highly publicized always on display can't be enjoyed. Without a higher performance processor, the gaming mode doesn't have a whole lot to actually enhance. If a company's software can make the experience of an otherwise typical smartphone more unique, Oxygen OS barely succeeds. It's still one of the more Spartan Android iterations that people enjoy using, and it manages to make the Snapdragon 690 feel generally fine under that 90Hz refresh rate. But even some of what makes Oxygen OS so beloved gets dialed back in this minimized version of the Nord. Now maybe updates can refresh the phone's experience later on, but the N10 reportedly will only get one major software update, and I know that some of you out there have already said you're not too happy about that. The thing is, I kind of get what OnePlus is trying to do here. They created a new subset of phones that made quite the splash at first, but right now it's a gateway for them to be part of a growing movement in mobile tech. Companies are trying to get into the budget category because, let's face it, phones like this at this price can really drive sales. It's just hard for me to really enjoy the OnePlus Nord N10 because the company already put a lot of its DNA into the original Nord, which we all liked, only to end up taking a lot of it away for the sake of hitting a low price point. As a fan of OnePlus, I just couldn't shake the feeling that in the Nord N10, I was constantly searching for those things that made me a fan in the first place. If all you're looking for is an affordable everyday device, this can be a worthy consideration. But even at this price point, competition is growing. And if you can afford to pay up to $100 more, the field widens significantly. I guess the best way for me to describe it is this. Here in the US, in the end, the Nord that we wanted from 2020 is simply not the Nord that we got now. But as harsh as this criticism might be, it just feels like OnePlus took any of the phones that you could find around the $200 or $250, $299 price point, and they just stuck their logo on the back. Is that enough for some of you out there? Well, let me know in the comment sections down below. You still get Oxygen OS in here, even though it's not being used to its fullest potential. And then after that, you do get this minimalistic design that OnePlus is championing with the Nord, but it might not be quite as exciting as, well, we were hoping. Again, let me know what you think of this phone and drop some likes on this video. Subscribe to Pocket Now if you haven't already for videos that are coming out basically every single day. With all of that said, we're gonna go ahead and call it on this video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and each other and we will see you in our next video.